Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, dear saints. Hello. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please follow me along in the scriptures that we will re be reading today. Read along with me. Read along with me word for word of what we're going to be looking at today. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Read along with me because as I always tell you, sometimes this goes quicker than the brain. Okay? This is actually take two on this video. I attempted to do this video yesterday. Monday, you know. But... I kind of lost my temper at one point in the video. The Lord doesn't like that. Especially with the topic that we are going to be talking about. So the Lord interfered. And there something happened to the video to where I could not play it back or upload it. So the Lord intervened. So, uh... <laughs> in your authorized version of the scriptures, we're going to be looking at Psalm 40. But we're going to be only concentrating on the first four verses, okay? And incidentally, today, in my reading of my personal devotional in the time with the Lord, I actually read Psalm 40 today. It's like, okay. <laughs> and today is the 10th. Also, um, it's probably a little too late at the moment, I don't know, but our brother Jeff, brother Jeff, um, who has given me permission to uh, use his name long ago. Um, today he's going to see if they're actually finally going to cut him open and fix the problem. So please keep that in your prayers. So Psalm 40. Let's get right into it. We are going to have some expository here. And you're going to see, hopefully, a beautiful portrait. Beautiful picture. Beautiful. Psalm 40, verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me, and heard my cry, crying out to the, on the name of the Lord, crying out to the Lord, when, um, when things are, when, you know, crying out to, <laughs> crying out to the Lord, okay? We cry out to the Lord. Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Yes, today is the day of salvation. Okay? Today, in this dispensation, it is the easiest time in the history of the world for someone to be saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. Coming to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, calling upon his name. See, there are many out there who protest <laughs> and who are vehemently against calling upon the name of the Lord. They call that a work. Why is that? Because the act, the actual calling, crying out for the Lord's mercy, is man the lesser calling upon God the greater. But see, when you got someone who comes around and says, you know, it's a work to call, that, you know, that you don't need to do that, what are they saying by that? What are they saying by that? They consider so, themselves the greater, and it is the lesser to call upon the Lord. Very interesting. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. Now you got to remember, this is for our instruction in righteousness. The book of Isaiah was written under the law, which was faith and works. Eternal security was not there. Okay? The Lord was not a permanent resident in any believer under the law. Okay? Uh, the Holy Ghost, the Lord could come and go, come and go. There was no eternal security. Okay? So, let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. And also, Psalm 73. Psalm 73. 
Like I said, I tried to do this yesterday, but um, the Lord was not pleased. The Lord was not pleased with my effort. <laughs> Psalm 73, verses 25 and 26. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. See, calling upon the name of the Lord. Salvation today is very simple, actually. The hard part is broken, being broken, brokenness. What are we repenting of? We are repenting of our self-righteousnesses, that we think that we are our own God and that we can save ourselves, okay? Or that we're we're you know worth something to be saved okay that is what we are repenting of we are repenting of ourselves okay we are the lesser and the Lord wants us to call on the greater and some of these people are like they get really cute well what if they can't say anything what see they'll do anything to justify themselves and remember in brokenness when you are broken when you have your legs taken out from underneath you okay you're left, <laughs> usually, with no other option. Someone who is broken of their self-righteousness reaches that point where they realize the only option they have is to consider the Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth. Okay, And right here, whom have I in heaven but thee? As Peter said to Paul, uh, as Peter said to Jesus, uh, you know, Lord, to whom are we going to go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And see, so many of these people who reject and are against the scriptural doctrine, the scriptural truth of salvation, calling upon the name of the Lord, and they get cute. Like I said, it's like, well, what if they can't speak? What if they can't do that? Da, 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 da. Okay? See, they'll do anything to just themselves. Why? Because they see themselves as the greater and calling upon the name of the Lord as the lesser. Okay? But see, right here, verses 25 and 26, whom have I in heaven but thee? See, brought to the end of your rope. Okay? Brought to the end. We're going we're gonna to touch on Psalm 73 here in a, a little later. But see, towards salvation today in this dispensation, brokenness, a requirement. Brokenness was a requirement throughout. Okay, The law was there to show you that you cannot live up to the perfect standard of God. Okay, that's, you know, you didn't, we didn't know what sin was until the law came, right? Okay? Alright? Brokenness. And when one is broken, call upon the name of the Lord while he is near. Seek him while he is near. Why? Because whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. Yes! Or are you like some of these people who are sorry and not truly broken? Sorry. And you come to the cross, but yet there's still some vestige of that self-righteousness. It's like, well, I can do it a little better. I got a well that I can draw from. And, you know, when you look at the text that we're examining, verse uh, 1 in Psalm 40, you'll say, like, well, Brad, where's brokenness in this? I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Cry ought to be enough, but for that, look at Psalm 39. Psalm 39, verses 10 under verse 13, which leads into Psalm 40, obviously. Both are Psalms of David. Verse 10 in Psalm 39. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. Mm. And we all know about David and Bathsheba. How he messed up in that. Mm. But also, remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. Verse 11. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, 
Thou makest his beauty to consume like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Every man is vanity. Salah. Do you realize that the Lord will allow things to happen to you in order to get your attention? In order to break you? To bring you on to himself? Hmm? And David here, we see what in verse 10? The stroke. Remove thy stroke away from me. Okay? I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. The Lord struck with Bathsheba, yes, but also with uh, Absalom. And also many other trials and tribulations David had. Okay? Many. Many of those. Lord still abused him. Yes, he did. But David paid a heavy price. A very heavy price. So see, we're seeing in Psalm 39, brokenness. Let's continue. Verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. For I am a stranger with thee. Very important right there. And a soldier, as all my fathers were. Oh, spare me, that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. I am a stranger with thee. Now a saint, a saint, who is once saved, always saved, eternally secure. A saint can get messed up. And what happens when we saints get messed up and decide and make the wrong choices and go after us? our sins, or the lust of the flesh. We feel alienated. We feel distant from the Lord, don't we? Don't we? And then he with what? When thou with rebukes dost correct a man for iniquity. One would like to argue, well, the Lord doesn't rebuke or correct children that are not his. That's true to an extent, but there again, you got to remember, how else did the Lord get a hold of you? Okay? Absolutely. See, the Lord will use circumstance, your own consequences. Okay? The Lord will use many things to try to get your attention. Okay? And He can get your attention very easily. But see, you've got to remember, it's never by gunpoint. It's never by force. Never, ever, ever. You've got to make the right decisions. You have to go to the Lord His way and not your own. So we see here in Psalm 39, verses 10 on to verse 13, we see what? That David was hit by the blow of the Lord, the stroke. Why? For iniquity. And he was being rebuked. In a dispensation where eternal security was not there. You've got to remember that. Okay? And because of that, David was a stranger. A stranger. I am a stranger with thee. He felt alienated, even though he was a man that sought after God's own heart. Sought after, ran after it, wanted to get to God's own heart. Not that he had the heart of God, God forbid. Okay? No. 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 But he sought after it. So we see here in verses 10 on to verse 13, brokenness, which leads us to, again to Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord, and this is a psalm of David, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry because David came to him through the right way. Broken. See, being broken is a requirement for today for salvation. It is. But also under the law, you got to remember, the law was there to show man his unrighteousness to show man that man cannot at his best state keep the commandments of God perfectly. Only one could do that. And that was who? Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, he's the only one who could keep the law perfectly. Hence, the sinful flesh was uh, sanctified because he did what no man could do, keep the law perfectly. Okay? But, oh, what happened there? <laughs> I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. We see brokenness, 
and even contrition. Contrition, taking responsibility. I am a stranger with thee. It's my fault that you have departed. It is my fault that these things are coming upon me. Okay? Everybody who is genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of God, has come to the Lord because, are saved and has come to the Lord broken. And, be, and you know what? If you've come to the Lord and you have not been broken of your self-righteousness, you're not saved. Oh, yeah. You're not saved. You can't be fixed unless you're broken. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on to verse 13. And today is the 10th. Romans 10, verses 8 on to verse 13. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And see, taking someone down the Romans road is the perfect way to lead someone that the Lord can use you to lead them unto salvation, unto them, unto himself. Because Romans chapter 1, 2, and 3 deal with you personally. And deals with the fact that you are not good. That you cannot save yourself. That there is only one option for you. Okay? That is the Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. Okay? Alright. So. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when you are broken of your self-righteousness. And have contrition, godly sorrow taking responsibility that it's your fault you're at the end of your rope you do what lord save me and it is right there we're seeing that we're seeing that for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation you run into these people it's like well i've called on the name of the lord a hundred times what were you broken no you weren't you weren't broken. You don't take personal responsibility for your hand holding the hammer that put the nails into his hands. No. See, calling upon the name of the Lord apart from brokenness, you're just uttering words. Those in and of themselves apart from brokenness. Of course, you're going to call upon the name of the Lord a thousand times, and yeah, because why? They're empty words coming from you. Empty words from a man who has never been broken, who saves themselves just by them believing. Hence, they save themselves. They are the greater, and they are they see it as an abhorrence for them, the greater, to call on the lesser. See how that works? For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, people will like to go to Joel, where it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Okay? You have to remember, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes, uh, Peter said in uh, Acts chapter 2, he, he quoted from Joel. But see, you've got to remember, in the Old Testament, under the law, eternal security was not there. And in the context of Joel, yes, they call upon the name of the Lord and he would deliver Israel. Yes, yes. But see, crossing dispensational lines. Today, in this dispensation, when you call upon the name of the Lord, number one, He delivers you from hell. He delivers you from the world. And He seals you. You are saved. 
It's not a contradiction. Watch out for these sleazy believists who like to say, well, there is a difference between the two. Difference in dispensation, yes. But that line remains the same. Okay? Yes, in Joel, it says, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Yes, delivered. Yes, in a dispensation where eternal security was not there. Today, that same scripture, you, we are delivered. But we are also saved. See, we are delivered from hell. We are delivered from God's wrath. We are delivered from ourselves. And when we come to him on his terms, the scriptural way, and he saves us, we're sealed. Once saved, always saved until the day of redemption. It's not a contradiction. Okay? Watch out for these guys who will go to any ends to justify themselves. Okay. Oh, and also verse 14. Verse 14, okay, is about those who the Lord specifically is sending out to do this. Okay? We're all in the ministry of reconciliation. Not everybody is called to do this certain thing. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay? Verse 14 is very self-explanatory. But see, the sleazy believist will go, well, it says believe there. It says it twice. Context, pal. This is about talking about those who are sent out. Okay? I bring that up because one of their, long ago, one of their arguments was that, well, they never deal with verse 14. Hush. Hush. Back now to Psalm 40. Verse 1 again. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. David, who came to him broken. You, lost person, you need to be broken of your self-righteousness. What is, is the Lord allowing things to happen in your life? Is, is the, has the rug been taken out from under you yet? Hmm? Verse 2. He brought, now, this we're going to dissect a little. We're going to concentrate on three words in this verse. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Pit of hell. Pit of the grave. But the pit. The pit. Uh, there are a multitude of verses we can go to. Okay, we're just going to try to keep this simple. Psalm 7, verses 9. On to verse 17, the close. Psalm 7, 9 on to the close. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. You could say for our instruction in righteousness. The perfect in heart, relational, dependent upon God. A perfect heart is a broken and contrite heart, dear friend. Okay? And without brokenness, you're not saved. Period. Well, I didn't come to the Lord because of fear or because I was broken. I came because of love. Well, you came on a false pretense then. God does not present tense love the lost sinner who rejects him. You've been lied to. God doesn't love you. Present tense. If you reject him. He doesn't. Video on that will be in the description box. My defense is of God which judgeth the upright in heart. Verse 11. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry at the wicked every day. And you got the Christians that go to just the red words. And those red words, they always mean and signify as the Sermon on the Mount. Beautiful. Great instruction in righteousness, the Sermon on the Mount. Beautiful. Praise God. Hallelujah. Salvifically and doctrinally, it has no application for us today, salvifically or doctrinally. Instruction in righteousness, amen, amen, amen. Amen. Salvifically, 
Doctrinally, no. They're all works. Okay? But you got the red word Christians. It's like, well, God's not angry. Um, yes, he is. This does not change. God is angry at the wicked every day. He's angry at you. You've rejected the true gospel. You want to worship yourself as your own God. Yes. God is angry at you for rejecting him. Don't let these Christians lie to you. Okay? Some of you atheists even have enough brains when you come, come across a Christian. It's like, well, God loves you unconditionally. And the atheist is like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. God loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell to burn forever and ever because I don't do it like you say? But yet he loves me? Even atheists is like, that, that's Ill, that doesn't make sense. That's, that's crazy. You reject the gospel. You reject the death, burial, and resurrection. You reject the blood of Christ. God's love is not for you. God's wrath is for you. You're a child of wrath. Child of disobedience. Because you disobeyed. You didn't accept the truth of the gospel. You're a child of wrath. You're a child of disobedience. God's love is not for you. God so loved, past tense, and gave, past tense. Want God's love? You've got to go the way of the cross. You can't boot the door and climb up some other way. We have a whole bunch of Christians that do that very thing. Okay? God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. If he turn not, there's that turning thing again. He will wet his sword. Wet, W-H-E-T, as a sharpening stone. He will wet his sword. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. Instruments of death. The wages of sin is death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. Mm. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. And the wages of sin is death. Every way is right in his own. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Hmm? All things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. All things edify not. Okay? Not all things edify. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. So he hath prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutor. See, if you reject the Lord long enough and choose yourself over him long enough, he's going to give you what you want. And the wages of sin is death. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity and hath con conceived mischief and brought forth falsehood. Yes! Someone who has the instruments of death prepared against him. Yes! Iniquity. Mischief and falsehood. When your wisdom is what? Earthly, sensual, devilish. He made a pit and digged it and has fallen into the ditch which he made. So many of you people who worship yourself as your own God because you are your own standard. You judge what is right and wrong. So many of you are falling into your own very pit that you have made for yourself. You are your own enemy. His mischief, consequences. You reap what you sow, my dear friend. For an example, just, just a second, a little rabbit trail here. For example, I'm a saved man. I've been saved for over 15 years now. But as a saved man, I am physically reaping the consequences that I wrought upon this body as a lost man. Saved, born again, converted, sealed with the Lord, Himself, the Holy Ghost, going to heaven when I die. 
but see those consequences that accrue to me because of what I did as a lost man. I'm saved. I'm forgiven of them. Yes. And yes, the Lord could relieve me of these. Yes, he could. But see, th this isn't it. This is not it. And see, the Christian and the heretic want you to focus in on this as if this is. And there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, my dear friend. Okay? So consequences. You do reap what you sow. You reap to your flesh, you're going to reap death. The wages of sin is death. You reap to the Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, you're going to reap of the Spirit. Okay? And the only way you can reap of the Spirit is if you are of Christ Himself, you know, if He dwells within you, if He has saved you. Okay? We are part of His bones, part of His body. We are not little Christs. No, but we are part of Him. We belong to Him. We are of His house. Okay? You understand? continue his mischief shall return upon his own head you reap what you sow and his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord most high Psalm 9 oh right over across the page excuse me Psalm 9 15 and 17 the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Look at America. Look at America that wanted sin. Look at America that calls evil good and good evil. We're reaping, we're reaping what we sow. Okay? This is the consequence of America selling itself over onto the Jesuit order. Okay? This is the consequence for America of the sins of this nation. Okay? But it's a good example. You live your life of sin, you're digging your own grave. And you're eventually going to fall in your own pit. Self-inflicted. Remember, there ain't no innocent person in hell, dear friend. No, not even one. Let's continue. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higayon Silah. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Psalm 28 in its entirety. Psalm 28. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be not silent to me, lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thy holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief is in their hearts. Yeah. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. Why? Because they regard not the works of the Lord nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Very good verse there. What are the works of the Lord today? The death, burial, and resurrection. The blood shed on the cross. That's what the Lord did. Okay? You could call those his works that he did. That he would be our propitiation. Okay? that he would save us by coming to him on his terms. Okay? And see, because they regard not the works of the Lord, you atheists, who are your own God, you believe in a God, 
Don't even start with that. Yes, you do. You are your own God. Okay? Okay? You are your own God. All right? But because you regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands, He shall destroy them and not build them up. Child of wrath, a child of disobedience. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, see, when you are brought to that point of brokenness, when you're, when you're contrite, when you realize it's your fault and you have no other option, no other, what, where else are you going to go? Huh? Yourself? How has that worked for you? You want to cry out to the Lord. It's, it's both necessity and a desire for Him when you come broken. See, this is why we are to abhor those who despise calling upon the name of the Lord out of a broken and contrite heart. That's why we are to abhor them. Because when you are truly broken, Brought to the end. Dead to yourself. Taking responsibility and you're horrified of going to hell. Horrified before standing before the Lord. You want to. Save me. But there again, why would someone reject that? Because they are their own God. They are the greater and God is the lesser. Every single time. Every single time. Pit. Verse 2 again. In Psalm 40. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Out of the miry clay. Job chapter 4. Job 4. Verses 17 on to verse 21. Now you got to remember the thing about Job. Job's three friends spake a mix of lies and truth. Okay? Lies and truth. Lies. They accused Job of something. And we see in Job, we've, we've covered this in the Job videos that we've done recently. Okay? But Job was perfect and upright. Job didn't do anything to warrant Satan doing that. But God allowed it. God allowed it. Okay? God allowed it. And ultimately, within the book of Job, we see that Job got a little high on himself. You know, he was patting himself a little bit on the back. Through being constantly ground down by his three friends, yes, yes, but nonetheless. So you got to remember, you know, like this is part of Eliphaz's uh, discourse. Okay, his first one. He accused Job at first, which was error, but he speaks truth here. 17 on verse 21, Job 4. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? You know, God made man out of dirt. And what is clay? What is clay? It's dirt. Clay is clay, Brad. Where does clay come from? Okay. Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? Dirt being more pure than God? Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly, such as Lucifer, son of the morning. And those that rebelled and followed Lucifer as well. Okay? 
How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay, our bodies, this tabernacle, house, houses of clay. How much less to in, in them that dwell in houses of clay, whose foundation is in the dust, which are crushed before the moth, our foundation is dust. Man came from dust. Okay, that's what that means. That's what I mean when I say that. Our foundation is Jesus Christ, the rock. Okay, but man's foundation, man came from what? Dust. Our bodies are bodies of clay. Earth, dirt. Okay, let's continue. They are destroyed from morning to evening. They perish forever without any regarding it. Doth not their excellency which is in them go away vanity of vanities said the preacher man at his best state is altogether vanity okay they die even without wisdom hmm. Hmm. okay Isaiah 45 Isaiah 45 verses 5 on to verse 10 Isaiah 45 verses 5 on to verse 10 come on I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Our instruction in righteousness. Look, atheist, and whatever, whatever you are, whoever you are, God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, made you. You wanting to believe that or accept that is irrelevant. When you die, you are going to go stand before him and give an account for yourself. Okay? Saved people are going to do it at the uh, judgment seat of Christ, you know, with the redemption of the purchased possession. After that, it's the great white throne of judgment. Okay? And your belief on that is irrelevant. That is what's going to happen. Unfortunately, so many of you are going to find that out by it before by by then it will be too late. Okay, okay. But right here, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. The reason why you are alive today, dear friend, whoever you are, is because the Lord has allowed it. And you're an atheist who wants to believe themselves to be their own god. You are your own standard. He girded thee. He created thee. He's given you life. His The light. He gave that to you. The light behind the eyes. Okay? A dead person, when you let you know you take a Polaroid camera or a picture of someone, some of them have that red glow in their eyes. That's not there for a corpse. A dead body. Why? Because the light that the Lord gave you is not there. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. <coughs> Where else are you going to go to? Buddha? Shimu? One of the many gods of Hinduism? Yourself? Hmm? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. That's that's exclusivity. That is an exclusive statement. Write this down. That is an exclusive statement. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, excluded all other ways, but he himself, when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? And he is the only way. The God of the New Testament is the same God of the Old Testament. One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You and I, friend, it doesn't matter who you are. We are made in the image of God in that we have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Okay? Verse 7. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Nothing gets by the Lord. You know, if Satan is going to afflict one of the body of Christ, 
He needs the Lord's permission. Okay? Nothing happens without the Lord allowing it. Nothing. And you read in Scripture, like uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, to be specifically, the Lord himself does not do the evil, but he allows it. He's God. He controls everything. He is in charge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. So in him allowing it is him, in a, in a way, doing it because he's allowing it even though he himself with his hand isn't doing it. Now see, to most people that makes sense. But someone who wants to justify themselves, you don't get it. So anyway, let's continue. Drop down ye heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them bring forth salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe unto him that striveth with his maker. The potsherd, let the potsherd strive, let the potsherd strive with the potsherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, what, what makest thou or thy work? He hath no hands. Now think about that. Who are you to say that God doesn't exist? Who are you? Verse 10. Look at this. Woe unto them, woe unto him that saith unto his maker, What beginnest thou? Or to the woman, what hast thou brought forth? Hmm. See the his woman there? Guess what? There's only two genders, by the way. And see someone who is messing around with their gender, you're showing contempt with what God made you, as God made you, and what God gave you. You, when, like if you're a man and decide to chop things off, have things added, same with a woman, you decide to chop things off and then take pills so you can get a beard longer than I can grow, um, you are showing contempt unto God. Now, the impossible is possible with God. Meaning, could someone who's gone that far actually be saved? get saved by the Lord. Yes. It's not impossible. That is with God. The impossible is possible with God. The minute you start saying that God can't save anybody, uh, you're, you're getting on dangerous ground. The problem is the probability of it. There's that one guy oh, when uh, the Lord had me to do that stuff on the gender issue. I saw that video about that guy who just went through horrific surgery. He had his vocal cords tuned as if a guitar. He had things cut off. And he's claiming to be saved. However, the gospel that he presents and the Jesus he presents is not the God or the gospel of the scriptures. He's not saved. The impossible is possible with God. But when you go that far and start removing things it's going to be very difficult for you but the impossible is possible with God and see that verse right there woe unto him that saith unto his father what begettest thou I'm a woman in a man's body no you're not you weren't born gay you weren't born a woman in a man's body. That's a lie. And for you to go against that, what you were created, you're showing contempt for God. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begettest thou? Or to the woman, What hast thou brought forth? I'm a man in a woman's body. Okay? Uh, all right, so... There are only two genders. But see, the whole thing that we looked at, shall the, verse 9, Shall the clay say to him that fashioneth it, What makest thou, or thy work? He hath no hands. You atheists, 
You've given no proof that God exists. Here's all the proof. But see, you don't want it. Because this is contrary to you. You know, it's like, it's the same thing with the uh, scribes and Pharisees at the crucifixion. When they said to the Lord, it's like, come down from the cross and we'll believe you. If the Lord would have come down from the cross, it's like, oh, okay, hi. They would have been like, devil! They would have stoned him to death. So many of these atheists who's like, give me proof that God exists. If Jesus himself were to appear to these people, it's like, here I am. They still wouldn't believe. Why? Because they have made a choice and chosen to believe in themselves. A fool who says in his heart, a fool trusteth in his own heart. Isaiah 64 Verses 6 on to verse 9. But we all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we do all and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Now see, we have seen in Job and in Isaiah 45, okay, about the clay, bodies of clay, man being of dirt being of the earth. And who are you to who are you to reply against God? Here is the continuation of something being broken. Okay, we're seeing more brokenness. Because so far we see about being delivered out of a pit. Okay? And miry clay being delivered from man. Remember, Satan savoreth the things that be of man, not of God, okay? But we are all, uh, what are we reading here? Um, 69. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, menstrual cloths. And we, do, we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee, for thou hast hid thy face from us, for thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father, being brought to the end, and having the only option, Lord, you're my only hope. Okay? But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Now, different dispensation book of Isaiah written under the in, under the law okay but every man mankind okay are the work of his hands for our instruction and in righteousness that we're looking at this right before okay God made you your belief or acceptance in that is irrelevant different your body alone Prove God exists. This did not evolve over trillions of years. We were designed. We were designed by the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? We are creatures of design. Verse 9. Be not wroth very sore. Fear of the Lord. Be not wroth very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. And this doesn't mean that everybody is saved all, uh, you know, at, out the gate. That's not what that means. We are all, we are all created by God. Okay, God created all of us. Okay, that's what, that's what that means. Okay. So, back now in Psalm 40, let's see this again, verse 2. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, called you out from the world, out of the miry clay, from among men, from a wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish, and set my feet upon a rock, 
and establish my goals. Oh, yes. So, very quickly, before we go to Deuteronomy, verse 2. We see when David, or when you cry unto the Lord, when you cry unto the Lord broken, as we saw in Psalm 39, verses 10 on to verse 13, you cry unto the Lord, what happens? He delivers you out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and establish my goings. Psalm 32. Uh, Psalm 32. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32, 31 and 33. For their rock is not as our capital R rock. Even our enemies themselves being judges. You know, the longer you walk with the Lord and the longer you go, you can begin to discern people who are who have been truly broken. Opposed to those who are not. And they're Christians. Okay? For their vine is the vine of Sodom. And of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons. And the cruel venom of asps. And also look at verse 17 and 18. Okay? They sacrifice unto devils. Not to God. Think about that. Think about that. Right? Think about that. Ye are of your father the devil if you reject the Lord Jesus Christ. When you believe that you are your own standard. When you are your own God. So, they sacrificed unto devils. When you believe in your heart that you are can know truly what is good and what is evil apart from the Lord and His Word, um, you're sacrificing on the devils. You are of your father the devil. Do you get it? They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the capital R rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And has forgotten God that formed thee. See, God created you. And God has every right to be angry at you. When you give your affection, which is due to him as creator, unto yourself by following your father the devil. And way too often, people will confuse jealousy with envy. Okay, there is a difference. There is a big difference. Okay, and First Corinthians chapter ten, clearest uh, tie-in with this. First Corinthians chapter ten, not the index. I'm not using my uh, normal set of scriptures here. First Corinthians ten, verses one on to verse four. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers, Paul is uh, linking himself up with the Hebraic people were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized, identified, unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock, capital R, was Christ. The tie-in right there, that the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New, and vice versa. Christ was the one that followed them in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Okay? It was Christ, God our Father. Okay? All right? So right there. Right there, dear friend. So, looking now back at uh, Psalm 40, verse 2. So, recap. When you read Psalm 39, verses 10 on verse 13, we see brokenness and contrition that leads into verse 1 I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry verse 2 he brought me up also out of an horrible pit rescued you from your lost life from the world out of the miry clay delivered you from man from yourself and set me and set my feet upon a rock the Lord Jesus Christ the foundation 
and established my goings. First Samuel chapter two, verses six and ten on to verse ten. First Samuel chapter two, verses six on to verse ten. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the beggar from the dunghill. I don't know about y'all sins, but when the Lord broke me and I took the responsibility for putting him on the cross in that bathroom at Papa Murphy's over 15 years ago, I was begging him to save me. Do you get it? Look at the verse. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. Lord, I am poor and needy. And lifteth the beggar. Lord, save me, please. Please save me. I don't want to go to hell. And lifteth the beggar from the dunghill. To set them among princes. Israel. Israel. What does that mean? A prince with God and man. That doesn't make us Jews, Hebrews, us Gentiles are grafted into their tree, having share of their inheritance. But to set them among princes, isn't this beautiful? <laughs> and to make them inherit the throne of glory. Again, we grafted into the tree of the Hebrew, we have a part of their inheritance. Isn't this beautiful? For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. And whether you're strength, by strength you live to be 80 years old, you can't save yourself. There is no other way. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. Those of you who have made your choice and rejected the Lord and have chosen to serve Satan, Gone past that point of no return. It's not that the Lord can't save you. It's that you have made your choice and you're not coming back. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth. And he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointing. And Second Timothy chapter 2. A reminder for us saints. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We want 25 and 26. In meekness. Instructing those that oppose themselves. You're rejecting the gospel. Your own, you, you are your own worst enemy. You're opposing yourself. Okay? If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Recover themselves. Make the right choice. Make the right choice. Wake up. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm of the devil. I'm serving. You know? And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Not save themselves. But make the right choice. Who are taken captive by him at his will ye shall be his king that's the ultimate temptation what better way to tempt someone than telling them that you can be as God 
judging yourself what is good and what is evil. Look in America. I rest my case. Okay? <laughs> I rest my case. Now, back to Psalm 40. Verse 3. So we see in Psalm 39, contrition. We see calling upon the name of the Lord. In verse 1, verse 2, we see the, con the result of being brought out of a pit, uh, out of the miry clay, and established upon what? A rock. This is beautiful, our instruction of righteousness. Verse 3. And when you are truly saved, he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. See, that's why with these sleazy believists who use profanity uh, at a given notice, and they it doesn't even register. They have no thought about it. It's like they can, they can cuss, they can swear, they can do whatever. Why? Because they are their own gods. They save themselves by their own belief. Okay? But see, when you are saved, you're a new creature. Okay? And I do believe I have a... Yes, I do. You're a new creature. you got to remember, dear friend, when you are a new creature, and what makes you a new creature is Christ himself in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Because remember, alcoholics can have a changed life. Yes, they can. By having a doorknob as their higher power. A narcotic user, he can have a changed life. Or she can have a changed life, yes. There are many things that a man, mankind, can do to change their life, but yet not be a new creature. Okay? There is a difference. When you are a new creature in Christ, things will change. But see, that change comes about first by being a new creature, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? All right? And see, when that happens, you want to conform to the Lord. You want to um, not, be uh, not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Accident slips happen. Okay? If I, again, if I were to drop a, a couch on my favorite big toe, it's like, Argh! okay? All right? Accidents happen. Slips happen. Yes, they do. Okay? You could be nailing something and for whatever reason decide to hit your thumb instead of the nail. And, you know, some, you know, might, ah! like, like I've told you many times, when I dropped the couch on my toe, I uttered an F-bomb. Blood went everywhere. I was bleeding like a stuck pig. And I hobbled to the bathroom. I was more offended in the fact that the Lord heard me curse and plenty of houses over, okay? Yes, but I was more offended and devastated at that than a throbbing, pulsing, bloody toe. That's the way it is with a saint. We slip. They happen. That happens. It's not a continuous thing. And when it happens in a saint, if you have thought evil, lay thine hands upon thy mouth. When it happens, you're like, Lord, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That, 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 saved people get that. But see, when you got these sleazy believists, they're the perfect example, who can just readily cuss as if it's no big deal and laugh about it. Hmm. Um... Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 10. And now this is addressing saved people. And you, saved person, hath he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Yes, dear friend, unless the Lord saves you, you are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. You're going to hell. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You need to come to the Lord on His terms. Broken of your self-righteousness, taking responsibility for putting Him on the cross and having the hell scared out of you. And see, when that's there, 
you can't wait to call upon the name of the Lord. It's not just that it is something required to cry out for mercy. You want to. Unless you're a self-righteous pig and you save yourself. Then you're offended because you're the greater calling on the lesser. Excuse me. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, Lucifer, okay? That the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Children of disobedience is not a saved brother or sister that gets messed up. No. You hear the true gospel. Come, let us reason together, you and I, and you reject it. You are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. That spirit that is in you, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Antichrist spirit. That spirit of Antichrist. Man at his best is altogether vanity. Man is irrational. Man is born a sinner. The spirit of man is in relation that spirit of Antichrist. Why? Because what is anti? To be against and to replace. To be against the true gospel and to replace the true God with yourself. You sleazy believists, you're antichrists. You're against the true gospel and you have replaced the Lord Jesus Christ with yourself. Good luck at the great white throne there, pal. Okay? Among whom, verse 3, also, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. Right there, verse 3 explains verse 2. Children of wrath, by nature, natural man will not receive. Hold your place here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, where is that? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, not one breath. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man, unregenerate, not saved, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, capital S, the Lord himself. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? So, by nature... Man is a child of wrath. But no, remember, God loves you unconditionally. God's not mad at you. You're a good person. You're crazy. And you're being lied to. And boy, doesn't that just puff up the flesh too, huh? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. God so loved, past tense, and gave, past tense, okay? Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. Black and white, simplified definition, grace, unmerited favor. The better blessing showing favor to the lesser. The better showing favor to the lesser. For by grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Our destination is fixed. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? That in the ages of, to come. He might show the exceeding riches of his grace. Unmerited favor. In his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, him first, are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. Once he saves you and seals you. For we are his workmanship, a new creature. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, 
which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We're called on to good works to be ambassadors for Christ. Okay? But see, he makes us a new creature. We are his workmanship. Hence, change. You can have change without being a new creature. AA people and Christians do it all the time. But a saint will have change be brought about by being made a new creature. And you are a new creature because the Lord lives in you. See how that works? Colossians. Colossians chapter 3. Not Timothy. Colossians 3, 8 on to verse 14. But now, we're talking about the new man, ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Now, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, I believe it is, Paul says, be ye angry and sin not. There is no problem with being angry if it is for a just cause. And not a cause because you had your toes stomped on or because you don't like it. The cause is scriptural. Okay? I hate abortion. Therefore, I love children. I hate sleazy believism. But I love faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Okay? We are to hate what God hates and love what God loves. And that is decided not by our own dictate, but by the scriptures. Why do you think the heretics don't want you reading that much scripture? Okay? All right? But when he says here, you know, but now you put off all these anger, he's not saying that it's wrong to be anger. This is an unjust anger uh, which is based off of what? Verse 5. Idolatry. Yourself. Because your little feelings were hurt. Your little tootsies were hurt. Okay? And commu filthy communication, which is, for example, trying to say that today you got to keep the commandments to be saved, which you don't, also encompasses profanity. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You see, you might be looking, well, it's like Brad. Put off the old man and put on the new man. You have to make the right choices again. God's not forcing you to do what's right. Satan's not forcing you to do what is wrong. You have to make the right choices. How do you make the right choices? Why don't you read it and find out? And when the Lord saves you in salvation, in salvation, there's no distinction. There's distinction in kindred. I'm Japheth. Some of you are Hamite. Some of you are Shem. Okay? There is distinction in flesh, in kindred, yes. In salvation, there ain't no distinction. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or, nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. And what are we reading to here? Verse 14. Put on, therefore, make the right choices, as the elect of God, elect, God is a God who chooses. God elected the way of the cross. This is not that satanic, silly, stupid, ridiculous Calvinism. It is not that at all. God elected the way of the cross. You go the way he is, he is elected, uh, you're of the elect. And remember, elect is also defined by context because uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 24, he's talking about the Jews, okay? Rightly divide the word of truth, and also you got to read the context, okay? Okay? <clears throat> Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Now, this is for saved people. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these, 
and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfecting. Perfectness. Charity is self-sacrifice. But in verse 13, okay, there are those out there who will say to you that you have to forgive someone in order to be forgiven. No, you don't. See, where they're taking that from is from what is pertinent for the dispensation of the kingdom of heaven, which comes after the dispensation of the time of Jacob's trouble. A little ways away yet, okay? During the kingdom of heaven, it has all works. You are going to be able to visually see Jesus Christ, God the Father, sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. Hebrews 11, verse 1, you don't need faith when you can see the Lord Jesus Christ. During the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of Christ, it's all works. So, during the kingdom of heaven, if you do not forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. That's how that works. Today, you are saved by His grace through faith. Okay? You don't have to forgive in order to be forgiven. Now, you are called to be an ambassador for Christ. The way you serve Him reflects Him. So, if you're a saint and you want to hold on to a grudge, it's not going to cost you your salvation, not at all. No, because it's not your salvation. But your, your walk is going to be shot. Your life is going to be a mess. Your fruit is going to be cantankerous. You're going to pay a price for your grudge. But it's not self-ethic. It's not a self-ethic requirement. Okay? Got to remember that. So verse 14, 13. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Should you forgive people? Yeah. Yeah, because number one, two, remember... The longer you hold on to a grudge, the more bitter you get. The more hard your heart gets. Okay? The more you can risk to lose of blessings and mercies, not salvation. Okay? You can lose a lot. Not your salvation because it's not yours to lose. Alright? You understand? So, you don't have to forgive. But you ought to. Of course. Because... Our Lord's honor is at stake. Okay? You don't have to, but you want to, yes. Besides, if you hold on to a grudge, it, tear, it tears you up, man. Okay? It tears you up. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived when you got someone who doesn't rightly divide the word of truth telling you you have to forgive in order to be forgiven. That's a work. And that's for the kingdom of heaven, which we are not in right now. Okay? Okay? Now, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. Okay? Oh, before we, before we continue, let's go back to Psalm 40, verse 3. So, when the Lord saves you, He seals you with, your, with Himself. And what happens? He hath put a new song in my mouth. Cussing goes away. Slips happen. Yes, you, your speech changes. Okay? Even praise unto our God. Amen. Praise the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Many shall see it and fear. Many shall see it. How? By the way we behave, by the way we walk, by the way we talk, by the way we respond. And you, you wretched, sleazy believists have no problem with cursing or swearing. I'm talking about grotesque things in your disgusting streams. So, when he saves you. And see, devils can fake that to an extent. But there are certain ones that you can get angry just really easy too. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And hath put a new song, and he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. See what? The new song and the praise. Living your life according to the scriptures. And fear. And shall trust in the Lord. And you know what? Before we go to Timothy, we, 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 we got it. We got it just, just for the sake of reading it. Romans 12, 1 and 2. 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove. What is that good? An acceptable and perfect will of God. And verse 3 in Psalm 40. Okay? Many shall see it in fear. And shall trust in the Lord. 2 Timothy 1, verses 12 and verse 14. For the which cause I also suffer these things, and all who will live godly will suffer persecution. Okay? All who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? For these, for the, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. I believe and trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe and trust on yourself because you saved yourself because of your belief. Your belief, your trust is in your belief, not on the Lord. Big difference. And am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Day of death, day of redemption, whatever. Everything that I am is on the Lord. Is of the Lord. Hold fast the form of good of that. Hold fast the form of sound words. Which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee. And there is nothing good but God. Keep by the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Which dwelleth in us. Now. Psalm 40 verse 4. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Mm. Jeremiah 17. See, so many people, so many Christians, trust in a formula, trust in a tradition, trust in a creed, or something verbal. And that stems from what? Usually fleshly. Jeremiah 17, 5 and 6. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. All of Christianity is fleshly. It's about you. It's about what you do. You're a good person. You save you. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, like having a famine in the land, in a salt land, and not inhabited. You go ahead and read verses uh, 7 and 8 on your own time. Okay? Verse 4 in Psalm 40 again. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. And you know what? In Jeremiah 17, let's read verses 7 and 8. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Planted by the waters, and out of his belly shall come forth living waters, planted, secure, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. Hmm. Psalm 40, verse 4 again. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud. Malachi 
Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. See, the, the devil, through covetousness, has made mankind focus on the things of the earth. Earth, That's what he gives. And what happens? Malachi chapter 3, verses 13 and on to 15. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, what have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is there is it that we have kept his ordinances and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Your best life now. Look at me. I just believe and look, I can go to movies, I can do this. Look at me, look at how great my life is. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. So it seems, doesn't it? Though judgment, uh, that, though judgment isn't executed speedily against an evil work, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is set on in them to do evil. But it will be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. It will not be well with the wicked. That's Ecclesiastes that I just totally bradized. Okay? Alright? The proud. The proud men. Hmm? Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud. Psalm 73 again. Psalm 73 again. Verses 16 on to verse 24. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Because Asaph here, Psalm of Asaph, what was he doing? He was looking at the proud people, the men that tempt God, that aren't troubled like us. Okay? Verse 6, Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain, violence covereth them as a garland, Garment. Why? Why? For there is no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. Verse 5. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. And hence, Satan has got people so warped that we, they call the proud happy. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me, until... I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I therein. Sanctuary, got to remember dispensationally, this was written in a dispensation where uh, buildings were there, the synagogues. Today, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, not a church building. Okay? So, how do we go into the sanctuary? Prayer. Speaking with the Lord. Surely, Thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down to, into destruction. And we already read about how the wicked is snared by the own, their own net, taken, uh, fall into the own pit, their own pit that they made. You go after riches and the, the lust of the eye, the lust of the, 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 the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Okay? Slippery slope. Your foot's going to fall in due time. Okay? Surely thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into the desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors. Yeah. Christian who is of the world and loves the world. What happens when the world goes ends up? As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, Thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. <laughs> Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. Pricked in your reins. A prick uh, draws out just a little blood, like in Acts, Acts chapter 2. They were pricked to the heart, and they're like, What do I, what do I gotta do? But when someone is cut to the heart, what happens? 
Arr, gnash on the you with their teeth. They stop their ears. They don't want to hear it. They away with such a fellow. See, pricking of something brings out only a little, while a cut brings out a whole lot. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Yeah. Thus my heart was grieved, I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant, I was as a beast before thee, a natural brute beast that can't that doesn't receive the things of God because they are foolishness unto him. Okay? Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsels and afterward receive me to glory and see also you know in Psalm 40 verse 3 you know many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord hmm? walking a life according to the scripture okay and also, uh, Proverbs 6, Proverbs 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. Proverbs 6, 16 on to verse 19. These six, the number of men. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Starts with what? A proud look. A lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood like these infiltrators who's here whose only purpose is to cause trouble and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations they just come up with stuff feet that be swift in running to mischief laugh at the deeds of the wicked it's funny ha 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 a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Psalm 40, verse 4 again. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 44. Yea, hath God said. See, when you trust in man and respect the proud, you turn aside to lies. Yea, hath God said. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. John 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, backtrack a little. Go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 and 35. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 and 35. O oh, ye, O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And there is none good but God. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. So in John 8 verse 44, when it says, When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Uh, Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Verses 12 on verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, for he speaketh of his own, from his own heart, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. God watch some of these guys. They can put on a good fair shoe. But out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will eventually speak. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. He should be his God. It's no good and evil. The ultimate lie. That you can know what is good and what is evil apart from God. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud, Satan. Nor such as turn aside to lies. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah, no, excuse me. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7, 4 under verse 11. Trust ye not in lying words. God, keep the commandments. Just believe and receive. You got to go to the church that Christ founded. You're not elect. You got to speak in tongues and be baptized in water. Those are all methods, modes of self glorification. In this dispensation, especially. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, the Lord, Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Not a phallus house. Okay? For now, you got to remember, Jer uh, Jeremiah 7, written under the law, the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works, not by grace through faith. Ugh. Stupid people those sleazy believists okay but okay but under the law there was no eternal security works were a requirement yes there were it was faith and works your faith was in what God was going to do by you honoring the law today your faith is in what it's finished that's how that works okay verse 5 for if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings if ye thoroughly execute judgment between man and his neighbor, that's a work. Different dispensation. Instruction and in righteousness. Okay? If ye oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and shed not and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever, forever and ever. Now see verse 6 and 7 showing you for what dispensation. Works of the law. Doing works. Because it was faith and works under the law. Okay? Verse 7. Oh, we already wrote, uh, read that. Verse 8. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal? Oh, where are we reading to? Verse 11. Will ye steal? The thief cometh not but to steal and what? Will ye murder? Will ye steal? Murder? And commit adultery and fear and swear falsely and burn incense unto Baal and walk after other gods whom ye know not? The thief cometh not but to steal and to, to kill, destroy and to steal. Boots the door out of the way and climbs up some other way and a thief and a robber. Hmm? And verse 10. And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say we are delivered to, all, to do all these things. Look at verse 9 and 10 there. Look at that. Okay? These guys, who say, okay, you, you, you shouldn't do that. But hey, it's okay if you steal, murder, or and commit adultery. Swear falsely, okay? Sure, don't worry. You, you just believed and received. You, it's okay. 
Or, hey, go to the Jesuit priest, pay a fine, and he'll absolve you of anything. See, verses 9 and 10, these people are just to, are doing these evil, wicked things. And in verse 10, And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered, we are able, we can do all these things, all these abominations. All things are lawful. I can do these things, yeah. We're delivered to, yeah. We're, we're, we're the chosen ones. We can do all these things. You see why I hate sleazy believism? You see why I hate Rome? You see why I hate every false way? Verse 11. Is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it. Seth. In Isaiah 28, we're almost done. Isaiah 28, hopefully this one doesn't malfunction. Isaiah 28, 14 on to verse 18. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell we are at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. And under, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion, for a foundation, a stone, a tried, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Verse 18. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And this is the same chapter which talks about line upon line, precept upon precept. Judgment will I will judgment also will I lay to the line. And righteousness to the plummet. And hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. And the waters shall overflow the high places. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then shall ye be trodden down by it. Why? Because you have made refuge your lies. See, when we get caught up, an overflowing surge of God's wrath and judgment is going to be poured on this earth after the redemption of the purchased possession. It doesn't look too good for you people who are your own gods. Not at all. That's going to be it for this video. I wanted to share this with you because it's just so beautiful in these four views, verses, this picture for our instruction in righteousness, this picture of salvation. All things that were written for time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And this video obviously is, in our, for our, is for our instruction in righteousness, but it's like just so beautiful. The words of his mouth are pure words, okay? More to be desired than gold, yea, than fine gold. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Thank you to all of you who love us and pray for us. And uh, thank you. We love you and pray for you too. Uh, also too, a young, uh, young brother. He's got a job interview tomorrow, uh, the 11th. So please keep him in your prayers. And please keep our brother Jeff in, our, in your prayers too. I'm sure I, he's gotten back to me. By now. Uh, so anyway, thank you, brother. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video.